Conkers, lift jets, and weather systems are just some of the new releases to grace the simulation world this week. Hi there folks, my name is NovaWing24 and welcome to the Nova app, your one stop location for your simulation release news and goings on from the week that was. So here we are on Sunday the 21st of April 2024 for another action-packed episode and we're going to jump straight into it this week with the release from the team over at India Fox Teco of their long-awaited Tonka or Tornado or multi-role combat aircraft for those who want its uh, formal, official, politically correct designation. Uh, so the Panavia Tornado was a multi-role swing-wing aircraft that was developed by a European consortium to serve a uh, serve as a locally pro- designed and produced aircraft that meant that Europe didn't necessarily have to rely on America all the time for its weapons technology. Uh, it uh, served as an origin with mostly with being NATO members and would serve with a number of not only NATO air forces but with air forces from other countries around the world in its time. It would uh, initially be designed as a primarily as a strike aircraft, but would later go on and serve in uh, anti-radar, electronic combat roles, reconnaissance roles, as well as being developed into a interceptor fighter variant as well. Now, the team over at India Fox Teco have brought their history of providing fantastically detailed modeled, ex- excellent de- execution of systems and high quality of their content to the Tornado this time with providing us with another great dual seat aircraft. Now this gives us a high quality 3D model uh, with uh, accurately re- representing the Tornado IDS variant, uh, which was the uh, primarily the European version rather than the, uh, the continental European version rather than the one used by the the British Royal Air Force, uh, and uh, gives us a highly detailed simulation of the systems. Uh, it gives us a real-world sound package based on real-world recordings, an accurate, realistic flight model tested by actual Tornado pilots and uh, weapon systems officers, and it brings in some other features uh, that we've seen recently introduced with their t- uh, with their Tomcat release uh, by giving you an interactive uh, a virtual weapons systems officer in the back. Now, along with the, as I said, primarily this is an IDS variant or the Interdictor Strike variant, um, and that is how the interior is modeled. However, they do provide us with external models for the British GR1 variant and the Italian and German ECR variants. Uh, this is overall, like, it's, a, it's an India Fox Teco production, so which means it is going to be an absolutely outstanding aircraft. It looks absolutely spot on for me. Now, the Tornado has to be one of my favourite aircraft. It really, really does. Uh, and it's great to see this aircraft brought to life in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, the only one of this kind that I had in the Legacy Sims was, I think it was Sim Skunk. Sims, Sim Skunk Works is one, uh, which was an absolutely fantastic uh, rendition of the aircraft for its time, um, but it was an absolute frame hog, it really, really was, so it'll be interesting to see how this one performs. Now, if you want to pick this one up, you can pick this one up for $35 US or your original equivalent available now from your favourite flight sim retailer. Sticking with the European aircraft releases, the team over at Microsoft uh, released their latest in their Local Legends series with the release of Local Legend 15, the Dornier DO31. Now, I really do love the Local Legends series uh, from Microsoft because they produce my favorite type of aircraft, which is weird and wonderful. Uh, so the Dornier DO31 was uh, stemmed, its, its origin stemmed from the, um, the Cold War panic that NATO, many NATO countries felt that in the event of the Cold War going hot, they would lose access to the important things called, you know, airfields. Uh, so there was an obsession for many, many years in uh, with the idea concept of vertical takeoff and vert- uh, vertical takeoff and landing. Uh, this was the result of a NATO requirement for a transport aircraft that was capable of doing the same thing, but uh, would uh, produce would be more capable than a helicopter version. So uh, basically they strapped a bunch of lift jets to a transport body and to see what happens. And the result was the Dornier DO-31. It was one of uh, the only aircraft that was actually, it remains to this day, the only jet powered vertical takeoff and landing transport aircraft ever to have flown, uh, which is a pretty cool and interesting um, you know, record to have. Sadly, it would never proceed beyond the experiment experimental phase because the obsession with vertical takeoff had kind of waned by the time the design was starting to mature. 
Uh, so the aircraft has a fascinating history and uh, only two, uh, so there were only three examples ever made. Only two of them, anybody knows where, there is, where they are, uh, both on display in museums. And I've actually visited um, the one that's on display in Munich and uh, it was an impressive aircraft to see up close, that is for sure. So if you want to uh, pick this, so this rendition of the aircraft that comes into us uh, from a brought to us like many of the local legends is brought to us by any builds uh comes to us with a number of liveries and gives us a uh based on real world data and comes with a accurate 3d model for this one uh in terms of sound set um if considering that it uses similar engines to the harrier probably they hopefully they got a decent sound set for it but i don't know i haven't actually picked it up yet but if you wanted to check it out uh have a head over to belgio's channel uh next week because there will be he's doing a video on it so make sure you check it out there but if you're wanting to pick this aircraft up and add it to your collection you pick it up for 15 us dollars or your original equivalent available now from the in sim marketplace now coupled with the release uh, for the do31 that comes there uh, the latest microsoft uh, city update which is a free update to the community of the release of city update 6 of southwest germany uh, so, like previous city updates, this gives, uh, gives us updated photo real information for a particular area of the world. This time in southwest uh, southwest Germany, uh, and gives us a number of POIs included, plus also a uh, custom handcrafted airport, which is uh, Friedrichshafen Airport, which incidentally was the airport where the Dornier DF31 was developed and where it uh, did its test flights from. So, uh, this is a free update once again from from Microsoft and the team of Sobo for giving us a update to six cities, including Mannheim, Heidelberg, Karlsruhe, Stuttgart, Islingen, uh, and Kiel and Strasbourg. So once again, we're getting a great set of additions to our simulator. And this is available for free from the NSIM marketplace, available now. Sticking with Europe and moving continuing on with airport releases, the team over at Aerosoft have released their latest in their Mega Airport series for Microsoft, Microsoft Flight Simulator with the release of Mega Airport Oslo Gardermoen. So this is the main international airport servicing uh, Oslo, which is the Norwegian capital, uh, and comes to us uh, with a highly detailed and accurate rendition of Oslo, Oslo Airport as it appears in 2024. Uh, with uh, all airport buildings modelled, custom terrain and elevation profiles provided for the runway and all taxiways, custom jetway uh, models with accurate variations for each terminal pier, so that's a lot of custom jetways included in this one, uh, a light dynamic airport environment including custom vehicle traffic on the apron area, ambient passenger movement inside the main terminal, so we've got once again we've got an interior modelling of the main terminals uh, with train and road traffic custom design for the airport in the vicinity. Not only does it include the airport with custom uh, aerial imagery for the airport, also includes the re ne nearby surrounding area as well, with animated hangar doors and proximity triggers for the Norwegian Air Shuttle Service and Norse Atlantic hangars. Now, if you wanted to pick this one up, you can pick this one up for $25 US or your original equivalent, available now from Aerosoft. Sticking with the Aerosoft development team, uh, they also released another airport package this week with uh, the release of their Aerosoft Mount Everest Airports Volume 1 Lukla. So I saw this actually with this release here, and I've, I've seen it was coming for quite a while, and uh, so it's now actually been released. So Lukla Airport, also known as um, Tenzing Hillary Airport, um, is a small airport located in the town of Lukla in eastern Nepal, and obviously most famous for the fact that it's the airport that services uh, Mount Everest. The other thing that's interesting for this one uh, is the fact that this is a airport that is included uh, as part of Microsoft Flight Simulator, and the one that's in Microsoft Flight Simulator is pretty good um so for the team over at aerosoft to take on the challenge of actually going hey can we do better um is an interesting concept and quite frankly yeah i'm not gonna lie they have done a really good detailed job there there are there are some definitely some improvements on the modeling and on what's here uh, it definitely has more life to the airport i'll definitely give them that there's more of the um animated the detritus that you sort of you know the things that bring an airport to life so with people nearby there's more detritus around the airport uh you know hang out parking areas so i'll definitely give them that um but your mileage may vary depending on how often you fly to this area but if you're a fan of uh Lukla, which of course everybody kind of comes into for the, the landing challenges uh, then you may want to consider picking this one up but it does offer uh, offer helicopter start start spots as well as the one way in or one way out 12 degree slope runway 
And if you want to pick this one up, you can pick this one up for ten US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Aerosoft. Continuing on with airport releases now, this time from the team over at MK Studios, released their latest airport with their rendition of New York's LaGuardia Airport for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So this gives us a highly detailed rendition uh, of the airport uh, with the up-to-date layout as it appears at the end of 2023, uh, handcrafted uh, airport building models and jetways from various airport facilities uh, covering all the airport buildings, custom elevation data, uh, including high-quality LiDAR scans, including custom runway and apron and taxiway elevation profiles, so you do get that undulating notion. Uh, custom POIs have also been provided around the airport. So not only, again, it, it's great to see a developer that's continuing on the idea of don't just uh, create the content that is, um, that is in the airport surrounds, but also go outside the airport as well. Now, if you wanted to pick this one up, add this one to your collection uh, and challenge yourself with flying uh, in and out of one of the uh, most challenging passenger experiences uh, for airports in America, you can pick this one up for 18 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Sim Markets. Moving away from America now, moving back to Europe, uh, the team over at Feel Their Simulations released their latest airport th this week, the release of Lisbon Humboto Delgado Airport for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, so again, the team over at Feel Their have uh, released a, a detailed rendition of the airport um, as it appears in 2023 uh, with all airport buildings uh, modeled and with custom texturing and the custom ground poly, custom uh, elevation terrain mesh bottled uh, with custom marking ground markings used and integrated. Uh, you also get an animated various animations around the airport, including animated radar tower, uh, as well as a uh, custom customized taxi taxi signage and lighting uh, with improved taxiway and runway approach lighting from simulator defaults. Now, if you want to add this one to your collection, you pick this one up for seventeen US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Field Air Simulations. Continuing on with European airport releases now, this time from uh, the team over at Beleri, a Microsoft Flight Simulator add-ons. Uh, they released a, the, their rendition of a Salerno, Salerno Airport uh, in Italy. So this is a interesting one, this one, because they have done uh, two versions of this airport. So this is actually, I think actually it might have been this development team that did this uh, for another airport we reported on a few weeks ago. Um, so they've released two versions of uh, Saleno uh, Ponte, Ponte Grano, or known as Costa de Amalfi Airport. Um, they've released the version of the airport as it appears right now in uh, when it is, re well, actually, as it appears, when it will appear in about three months' time when it reopens. Because uh, it was closed uh, a couple of years ago for, uh, for redevelopment, um, and it's being reopened uh, this year, later this year. Um, so they're offering the, you know, the current extended runways, two new taxiways, um, main apron enlargements, um, all airport buildings modelled as, as it appears either right now or as it will appear upon reopening later this year. But what's interesting about this add-on as well is that the redevelopment of this airport isn't actually finished yet. They've got another stage of the redevelopment, which is planned for completion in 2026. Um, and for that, they've actually included... Um, it's not as a separate purchase. This is all a part of the one package. Um, how the airport will appear once the final plan comes to realization, which is in 2026. Um, now, they can't coexist at the same time. Funnily enough, you have to choose which one you want to display, you want to have um, displayed in the sim. Um, but the main difference between the two versions is that the one that's scheduled for release, yeah, the, the completion 2026, the 26, 2026 version, um, not only does it have a longer runway, it also has a new main terminal and a new GA test uh, GA terminal and the integration of a new ILS system. So um, it's kind of cool and kind of interesting that we get a bit of a glimpse. Normally, in flight simulators, are uses a glimpse into the past um, but this one is giving us a glimpse into the future and overall from looking at the pictures the team look like they've done a pretty reasonable job um, so yeah if you're looking at for, to flying uh, into Italy for something a bit different and maybe getting a, uh, a sense of being back to the future then maybe you want, might, want to, might want to pick this one up so you can pick this one up for 15 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Sim Markets Continuing on for more airport releases, but this time more than just an airport by region. The team over at NZA Simulations released their latest region pack, release of the Toran, Tor, Toranga region in, New, in the North Island of New Zealand. 
Uh, so continuing on like their previous region packs, this one includes uh, three uh, fairly yeah, three fairly decent sized airports. This one, so you get uh, the airports of Tarunga, Wahi Beach, and Motiti Island, um, which. Funny enough, it, it is. Uh, it actually has. They're using a different IKO for this one. Officially, the IKO has changed, uh, but in the sim, it's still November Zulu, Oscar, India. So they've kept it as that. Eh. Anyway, moving on. Uh, you also get a hospital heavy port as well. So for you frantic palm tree fans, there is something for you here. Now, along with these airports, this is. Uh, you know, as hinted at by the name, uh, this is a region pack. So the idea of this one is that you actually get to explore a part, a slice of New Zealand, and it includes more than just these airports. So yes, you get a custom, you know, custom modeled airport with high detail bottles, high detail terrain data, um, and quite frankly, they look really good um, of, of in this pack for each of those three airports and the helipad. You also get a significant number of POIs uh, for the region. You get custom terrain data, uh, custom photo real imagery um, with uh, custom uh, displays and custom uh, models of various uh, set of so of the POIs, uh, but just general updates of the region uh, space to actually bring it smoothly in there to give you something to actually go and explore with. So I really, really like this series from NZA Simulations. I think they do amazing stuff for this one. Um, includes GS Express profiles, custom runway lighting, all that kind of fun stuff that we usually get to see, uh, custom animated flags, animated screens in the terminals, um, and apparently they, they called out specifically the Surf Shack Eatery at Wahi Beach Aerodrome. So perfect place for a $100 hamburger uh, for this one. Uh, this one also, but it does actually rely on you having the, or they don't necessarily rely, but it highly recommends, actually, no, sorry, it is a requirement that you have the Microsoft Flight Simulator World Update New Zealand installed, uh, and they also highly recommend that you have photogrammetry enabled for all of their effects to be seen correctly. So if you want to pick this one up, you can pick this one up for 20 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from NZA Simulations. And finally, rounding out the Microsoft Flight Simulator news this week, the team over at Hi-Fi Studios have come back from the dead uh, with the release of their active, long-awaited Active Sky Flight Simulator weather add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So for those who don't know, who might not have been around in the time, the before times before Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, Active uh, Hi-Fi Studios with their Active Sky product, a uh, series of products, uh, were basically one of the two go-to people, like, you know, sources for live weather data. Um, the sim itself, Microsoft Flight Simulator 10, basically, and prepared, they stopped supporting live weather updates um, many, many years ago. Um, so it was, uh, if you wanted to have live weather in your sim, you turn to one of these two products to be able to get that data. And those uh, now, and Hi-Fi Studios for me, Hi-Fi was the one that I used the most um, and I absolutely loved it, never faulted it. They had some great features in it. Um, active error, you know, with the things like, you know, giving active turbulence, uh, a lot of grand effects and things that you just, often didn't have in the base in the base simulator back in the day um with the release of Microsoft Flight Simulator and the fact that they locked down the weather API, there was a lot of questioning about, you know, what's the future for, you know, Rex. Uh, so, you know, because Rex was, um, Rex Studios was, was you know, with their weather engine and Hi-Fi because Hi-Fi was built purely around a weather engine product. Um, and so when I saw that they'd announced that they were you know, bringing out this uh, Active Sky Flight Simulator product, I thought, oh, okay, they've finally got access to the weather API and we're going to see them come back and it's great and they, ha and they are back. But um, the weather API for Microsoft Flight Simulator is still, clocked, is still closed. It is still locked down. They're not using it. Um, so what is this product? That's a great question. Um, so they basically... Um, They've got two modes. Um, they've got preset weather detection mode, um, which is interesting. What it essentially does is that it pushes through a um, option. For, essentially, it, it it creates weather presets and injects them into the sim on a regular basis, um, based off Active Sky Networks. Um, access to real world weather data and their interpretations of that. So. It is so. It is. I see. It's not. It's not the same as a live weather API injection, but it is similar. Um, and they're claiming that they they don't. You know, you it's it's you, you don't notice the the change of you know as it's as it does the update. Um, the big part of this one though is it does give you historical weather updates, and that's a big thing that Active Sky 
uh, traditionally has always had is the ability to recreate historical weather um, for a certain period of time. Um, that's currently limited to for general weather. It currently goes back about a year. Or I think it's one to two years of, of whether you can pick a day anywhere, pretty much anywhere in the world, and you will have access to that, that weather data as it was in that day. Um, and that's a that's a big feature, and that's come back with part of this preset weather depiction mode. Um, so it is a, it, but as I said, it's not an actual live weather injection for this one. They're essentially doing on the fly builds of custom weather presets and injecting those. So I'm hearing mixed reports from the user base of what that actually feels like and looks like in in the sim. And now they have a second mode available though, which is called passive depiction mode, where they essentially they they leave Microsoft Live Sim in this internal weather live weather engine to do its thing. And quite frankly, for me personally, I have found, other than the occasional teething trouble with it, vast majority of the time, the live weather engine built in the sim, for me, has been has done exactly what it says on the tin and worked for me. Um, however, what the passive depiction mode means is that it, it adds in the additional features and things that Microsoft Live Simulator doesn't really do at the moment, which is what they call their active air effects. So active air effects, uh, they are things like um, updated uh, turbulence um, modeling, clear air turbulence, updrafts, downdrafts, and microbursts, uh, thunderstorm vicinity turbulence and draft effects, and gust and wind variation and gust related turbulence. So it takes it, reads a lot of the data there, and adds in some more um, dynamic effects to your aircraft and your flight experience. So this is an interesting tech, this is an interesting product for this one. As I said, it's one of the products that's been awaited a really long time by the community. I definitely much was very look, looking much look, much looking forward to it, but I'm 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 sitting very much sitting on the fence at the moment about it. Um, I said, I've I've had Active Sky the Active Sky uh, for Legacy Sims in the past for F6 for Prepared. Uh, absolutely loved the hell out of the product. I thought it was great. Um, this time around, I'm sitting on the fence a little bit. This one. So yeah, if you're wanting uh to pick this one up and grab this one for yourself um you can pick this one up for 25 us dollars or your original equivalent available now from your favorite flight sim retailer continuing on with flight simulation news now but moving into the world of x-plane the team over at flight procedures simulations have released their rendition of the embraer e190 now um Flight Procedure Simulations is a rebranding of previously known as Supercritical Simulation Drew, uh, Supercritical Simulations Group, uh, which of course brought the Boeing 748 and the EJ Evolution series to explain. Uh, and this is their latest product and the first product under their new branding. So the Embraer E190 series is one of their uh, one of the Embraer's regional jet series and is the uh, is a twin engine jet. And so I absolutely just love the Embraers. Like I just I think that they just they just, they just look cool. They do. Anyway, uh, so this gives us a highly detailed rendition of the Embraer E190 uh, with custom coding, custom uh, coding systems for the flight management system, brake system, hydraulic, electrical, bleed air, air conditioning, and various other flight modeling systems. Custom flight model made by the team, uh, by, the, by, the, by the development team, uh, based on real world inputs with a custom fly-by-wire system that provides flight protection within the control laws as programmed. Uh, various high detail programs that are going to be far more interesting of you, those of you who fly tube liners. Uh, but along with that comes with integrated F mod sound set recorded from an actual aircraft, uh, as well as integrated Avitab support functions and with an integrated uh, e electronic flight flag for setting at various air various aircraft systems and settings with a number of real world liveries included. Now, if you wanted to pick some up, you could pick some up for normal. Normally, it's a normal price of seventy US dollars. We're currently on a launch special of twenty percent off for fifty-five US dollars or your original equivalent. Available now from xplane.org. And finally, rounding out the very extended edition of the Nova app this week, the team over at uh, Floating Origin Interactive have released into early access uh, their product, which is an I, 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 it's interesting. This one, I, I, I love this product by the way because I have been in, I was involved with it uh, back in the uh, early days of it. We saw a, a presentation on it back at Flight Sim Expo last year. Uh, this week, we saw the release into early access of Kit Hack Model Club. Now, if you're wondering. This 
sounds like a game I've heard before. That's right, because it was pre. This is the uh, game formerly known as Kit Bash Simulator, which was formerly known as Balsawood Flam Balsawood Simulator. So this aircraft, this this aircraft, this simulator has gone through a number of evolutions of uh, its name and its purpose over the years, um, and it has come to us as a fascinating title. And I'll be straight up honest and say I absolutely love this title. I, I was very fortunate enough that I was in on a some early production builds of this, uh, as well as uh, fly as well as having the uh, original Balsa Wood uh, Balsa Remote Control uh, Simulator, uh, which I absolutely loved as well. Uh, the the short version of this one is that this comes to us from the guy that created a, a Kerbal Space Program, like n- not the watered down or horrific version that was that we were the community was left with after Take Two took it over, uh, but the original release film. This is the guy that originally created Kerbal Space Program, and he's like, you know what, I want to do Kerbal Space Program, but I want to do it, um, you know, in an atmosphere with remote control models that I can do more fun stuff. So if it is Kerbal Space Program, but for vehicles and aircraft, and yes, you can build rockets in it as well, and it's done from the perspective of, you know, you've got um, remote control aircraft model parts and um, car parts, and you can make and build whatever you damn well please, and you absolutely can, and there are some insane fun things that you can create with this. Not only that, it does come with a number of models uh, pre-built, so if you just want to jump in and uh, fly stuff, you absolutely can, but one of the big cool things about this is that it comes in with integrated multiplayer support, and it's not just you know multiplayer support. You can do multiplayer racing, uh, you can do a multiplayer um, dog fights. So you can actually arm your remote control aircraft with paintball guns and go shoot at your friends uh, in this one, and it is so cool. Like as I said, I, I am very fortunate enough that I was involved um, in some uh, early, very early builds of this. Uh, I was also involved um, and, and I 100% know that I was involved with some of the social media creation for content for it um, uh, last year and I absolutely think this, this sim is awesome. I love Kerbal Space Program back in the day and this was an insane amount of fun. I never, I didn't think I would enjoy this sim when I, when I first got it but uh, I do and it's awesome. You should totally get it. Uh, so if you want to pick this one up, this one available is uh, normally twenty US dollars currently on a launch special for early access launch special of sixteen US dollars. Um, they've got a fairly clear roadmap as well for when they're going to go to a full one point zero release, which is honestly only five months long. Um, basically, they've they've hit early access now, um, and they're targeting a version one point zero, and it is pretty much feature complete. Uh, right now, they've just got essentially the, the early access part of this game is here for bug fixing and quality of life updates. Um, you know, it, it has the multiplayer fully functional right now. It has all the parts. It has a lot of parts in there, and the base game is pretty much done. Um, so they're targeting an August release of version one point zero. So uh, it's a great time to get involved in it. Pick it up. I think I had a lot of fun with it. I think you will too. Available now on Steam for sixteen US dollars. Available now. And with that, folks, that does now round out the overwrap for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by following me on Facebook and on Twitter and on Twitch. Just search No Morning Twenty Four. All right, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.